All right, welcome back. Um, I, um, I wanted to just do a, do a recap of where, we, where we've been, uh, where we are, and where we're going. Uh, and in particular, the, the various uh, technologies that we've been seeing so far. Um, and and, and how, how the, uh, the various stack uh, and techniques that we've been using, uh, how they all communicate with one another. So let's, let's see. Uh, so up to this point, uh, we uh, we have been uh, building a, a couple of uh, uh, projects, right? One of them uh, is a uh, is a uh, a Java server, right? And uh, the other one is a React uh, client, right? Uh, and here we are at the at a browser, uh, us right here interacting with a with a browser. Uh, and uh, and we've we've been. Um, Implementing a couple of things, we 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 first started off uh, with uh, with implementing a, a, a simple Java server uh, where it was hosting some uh, some web pages, right? Some uh, resources, either uh, HTML, uh, JavaScript, right? Maybe see some CSS here. Uh, so that's, that's that's where we had started, right? Um, and and we were visiting the uh, the server, asking for these for these pages. Uh, for the for index pages and whatnot, they were they were downloaded from to our browser. And once they once once they lived on the browser, uh, these these uh, pages would go back to the server asking for data. Okay, uh, usually uh, using uh, AJAX, right, and uh, jQuery, and then used uh, uh, our jQuery files that uh, would run inside of our browser, and they would update the DOM, right? They would update the DOM. Uh, then uh, we moved over to uh, to the React client for for a bit. We abandoned our JavaScript, uh, our Java server for for a little bit, uh, and uh, and instead focused on um, on implementing a a, uh, a using a, uh, a a little more advanced library, more than uh, jQuery. Certainly not straight J uh, JavaScript. Uh, and we tried that for a little bit, right? So so same thing though. We would uh, hit a um, this was this would be a, a a React client uh, implemented uh, in a Node.js server, right? even though we never actually configured Node.js internally, right? It, uh, Node.js is the one who was hosting all our pages here, right? Our, um, you know, it all started with uh, there's an index page in there, if you remember, right? Um, HTML. If you remember that, there's an index page in there that has a, a has a root div, right? Remember that, right? And then it had uh, a couple of index pages in the index uh, uh, JS files. Uh, that would eventually, what it would do is that it would it would try to inject all the content into that root diff. Remember that, all right? Uh, so, so uh, when we when we execute our N using npm start, uh, there was a lot of files in here uh, that uh, you know the app JS, right? Our our whiteboard JS, right? All our components, all our uh, containers and whatnot, right? Uh, they were all written in a version of JavaScript that the browser would not understand, right? Uh, so our our um, the process of running npm start uh, would compile or or transpile uh, all these all these um, all these high level JavaScript that had you know HTML embedded, you know mixed in with JavaScript. Would compile this down to a uh, a single JavaScript file. A single JavaScript file that would um, uh, that would uh, uh, concatenate all of them, right? And it would download out uh, to our to our browser. And the same thing like we had before, right? It would download from to our browser. Um, uh, it would it would execute the JavaScript here in a, in a in a version of JavaScript that the browser would understand now, right? Not the high level, you know, uh, uh, EJ, um, uh, JavaScript six, right? The new version of JavaScript. Uh, and, and all the mixture of HTML and JavaScript all embedded with JSX, yes? All that would be transpiled down to a version of the, that the browser would understand. Uh, so anyway, so that would download to the browser. The browser would say, ooh, I need some data. Well, I need some more components. You know, components contain other components. Uh, it would go fetch you know, any, other, any other JavaScript that it would need, uh, any other snippet of HTML that it would need from, from the, from the, from the Node.js server. It would download and would build the page for us dynamically very much like what, what uh, jQuery did here, manipulating the DOM and whatnot, but usually, usually uh, using React's uh, library to manipulate the DOM and dynamically render this page. Yes? 
Right, so this is where we are so far. Uh, yesterday we uh, we started playing around with uh, with another idea uh, that uh, you know we we were using here some hard coded data, right? Like uh, you know courses dot json, so some JSON file that was containing the data that we wanted to render. Yes, right? And uh, you know maybe we, we wrapped it around a service and whatnot, but it was hard coded data. Yes, and uh, and even though we were they were being rendered here dynamically on the content, and we could add and remove and edit and manipulate the data. It was all transient, right? When, when we refreshed the page, everything was gone, right? The whole thing would reload, would reload the, the old JSON file, and all our changes would be lost, right? So, so we extended that and said, well, what if, you know, I know the ser this server I know is going to be up for quite a while. Uh, what if uh, instead of, uh, you know, having these files here, maybe I could declare a, a, an array variable on the server okay, that can contain my data. And if I could send HTTP requests somehow to that server, it says, hey, store this data, you know, this data that I'm sending you, instead of, of storing it transiently here in the browser and risking you know, refreshing the page and everything's gone, right, what if I store it here in a, in a, in a variable uh, from in the server so that I can then go fetch it and then I would have it store as long as this server didn't crash on me, right? That, and as long as that variable was still alive, right? I could I could uh, keep keep track of it, right? In that local variable in the server. Everybody okay? Right? Uh, so so yeah, we explored that. We introduced uh, uh, exposing endpoints, you know, web service endpoints, uh, specifically RESTful uh, web service endpoints, right? That that uh, allowed me to bind uh, various URLs various URLs to each one of these endpoints implemented with various functions right various functions that would execute when a particular HTTP request would come in right okay uh, and that worked fine right we would we would be able to store data in these arrays uh, as long as the server was still up and running the arrays would be good they would remember everything yes uh, now there's a big flaw in uh, in that implementation uh, one of them is that, right, what if the server goes down? Right? If the server goes down, any, any updates that I would have stored in those variables would be gone. Next time around that I would come back, none of that would be there, right? So certainly it was more uh, life, um, uh, long, more, more long lived than my browser, right? Certainly, certainly it was more permanent than my browser, but not, not totally permanent, right? The server could go down and I could lose all of that. Ideally, I would be able, I would want to store that somewhere permanent, right, in permanent storage, like a, maybe a file if I could write to a file, uh, or what we we tried to, we started exploring yesterday, a database, right? That would be the ideal, right, in the database for long-term storage. Yes. Uh, so what we did uh, yesterday, we started exploring the idea of replacing these arrays. It says, well, no, let's not use that. Those we're not going to use the arrays. Right? Instead, I'm going to use a huge array. You know, I'm going to use a huge array called tables. So these are going to be you know, SQL uh, tables, which basically is just one huge collection, right? one, huge, one huge array, presumably an infinite array. Uh, that is, uh, it, and the array is structured right, where into what we call records uh, and fields. Right? And uh, so somehow I needed to be able to connect to uh, to that, uh, to those tables, right? Somehow I needed to, if, if, if this came in, if data came in, instead of storing it in this local array, instead of using this local array, I'd like to be able to store it in this really big array over here, the, the tables over there. So I would need to, instead of pushing into this array, I'd like to do an insert, right? Uh, and uh, if somebody asked for for all for the data, instead of retrie retrieving the the content of the array, uh, I would I would do a select. Right on the on the database, right, and retrieve it from this huge storage uh, in the database. All right, so so this so this is what we were, were were missing, right? This piece that would allow us to to do this conversion, this communication between our data model here in the in this in the Java server and the in our database, right? Uh, now there's there were there are many there there well, there are at least there are at least uh, two options, right? One of the options. Uh, is to use a library, a very low-level library called JDBC, you know, Java Database Connectivity Library, right? Uh, and the Java Database Connectivity Library allows you to directly ask for a connection to a database server, 
right? And then send low-level SQL commands uh, to do these inserts, these selects, these updates, this, de this delete, right? And what you get back is basically an array, right? Of some generic array with that are, you know, it allows you to walk each one of these rows. It allows you to walk each one of these fields per 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 row. Yes, uh, but those it's very very generic, right? It doesn't it doesn't know anything about any high-level data types, um, uh, any any classes or anything like that. Uh, so we we, we we did not go that that route. Okay, that's very low level. Uh, instead, you know, this is almost like saying, well, I'm going to use jQuery or JavaScript instead of using React uh, or using Angular. Right? You can certainly, or, or you know, like saying, I'm going to code in a, an assembly instead of you know, coding in a high-level language. Uh, so yeah, we don't we don't we don't want to use this low-level uh, um, uh, library. Instead, we use a higher-level library that that uses JDBC underneath. Right, on, that it's written in terms of JDBC, uh, and instead is a, it's called an ORM. Right, an ORM, it's a it's called it's a means an object relational mapping uh, strategy. All right, meaning give me an object, right, and I will I will try to map it to a table. Right, if you give me an object, right, that has these fields and these values, right, I'm going to try and map it. Right, and, and, and that and, and you know and this uh, this has a class, a class A. I'm going to try and map it to a table also called A. Uh, and if it has these fields, I'm going to try and map it to these fields in the table, right? And various instances of that class, I'm going to try and map it to records in that in that table. Okay? And I'm going to do this all under the covers. You just need to tell me what class do you want. Right, and you need to tell me what the how do you you need to specify me one of those fields. You need to tell me how do I make this pri as, as a unique identifier, right? Um, since uh, relational databases are very keen on keeping track one of those fields as being a primary key. You know, that's a that's a uh, something that is a, it's kind of like a, almost a requirement in uh, relational databases, uh, especially if you have records that. Are somehow related to other records. You know, related. That's that's why they're called related relational databases. Uh, and primary keys as the, are the main way of generating these relationships. Yes. So those those were the uh, requirements. Uh, the, an ORM takes as argument a class, right, and which field is the primary key, and that's it. Once you have that, it will automatically uh, create the tables for you, right, uh, and give you a high level API. So that you can store things, you know, retrieve things, you know, find them and then update them and put them back, right? Or remove them, right? And that's what we played around with yesterday, right? Uh, we we used uh, JPA, right? And uh, and and part of that jargon, part of this this layer, right, is that you need a class, you need an object, class A, uh, and the one who actually does the communication back and forth, we call it the repository. The repository. The repository was the one who translated the Java world into the SQL world, right? From SQL to Java, and from Java to SQL. The repository did that for us, right? As long as you followed, you know, their specification. Yes, right. And so we we play around with some of their very low level, um, uh, generic functions like find all, find by ID, delete by ID, right? We play with save. So those are all generic implementations of the repository that translate to inserts, updates, deletes, selects into the database. Make sense? Right? And the conversion between rows, right, SQL rows, and Java objects, right, is what the repository does, implementing the ORM strategy, right, the object relational mapping strategy. Yes? Everybody good? All right. All right, so, so today we're going to continue uh, in, this, in this vein. We're going to co continue 